Eight out of ten, why me? I was having my birthday party at one of the most fun places on earth. My parents were letting me have my sixth birthday at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. When we got there, my friend Brian was already there. I yelled hi and he yelled hi back. And after a few minutes, my other friend Jenny showed up. Since it was their first time here, we decided to sneak backstage, along with my other friends, to see Freddy himself. When we did, I ran over and hugged him, and he hugged me back. I asked when Golden Freddy would be out, and he told me in a few minutes, but to follow him and we can go get some pizza. He asked me what my name was, and I told him Noah, Noah Blackley. We followed him into the room, but he was gone, and a man in a purple sweater had arrived instead. The last thing I remember is screaming as someone was banging on the locked door, and seeing my friends being put into some spare suits. I got Golden Freddy. A few years later, someone walked in looking for a job as a night guard. Someone on the phone greeted him and asked his name. He said his name was Frank Blackley. Oh my god, it, it's him. Dad! Dad, it's me! Noah! It's me! And at 9, the Fredbear virus. While refreshing scottgames.com, I was waiting for a teaser for FNAF 4, but my screen went black. After a while of waiting, I saw something flash on the screen. It looked to be a weird Fredbear. After it appeared, my computer got the blue screen of death, and I had to shut it down. When I turned it back on, there were all kinds of numbers flashing by, but I swear I saw Golden Freddy's face a few times. Five minutes later, the screen was tinted red, and I started hearing church bells, distorted church bells. It rang 12 times, and sure enough, it was midnight. But I swear to God, it was like 3.30, 30 seconds ago. Then it showed my desktop, but the only icon was SC877 Games. Eventually, I clicked on it, because why not? When it loaded, it was a close-up version of Fredbear's face, and it played the jump scare audio. Text on screen said Fredbear underscore virus exe has started running, and kept showing that. After saying that a few times, the computer shut off and wouldn't turn back on. And at 8, Helpful Foxy. Have you ever thought about Foxy? I mean, he's a fan favorite after all. Look at the animation. When he comes into your office, he isn't attacking you, but instead, he looks like he's more so checking in. Maybe he tried to save someone and got damaged, hence the hook. So instead of spending money on the repairs, they put him behind a curtain so the other animatronics wouldn't attack him. I know this for a fact. When I was playing the first game, I forgot to check on Foxy, and when he came into my room, the game didn't end. He walked behind me and waited. I was waiting for the jumps so I didn't continue the game. And when Chica had showed up by my window, Foxy ran out. The same sounds as when someone is in the kitchen played, and then he ran back. He did the same to Bonnie when they showed up, and when I loaded up the next night, the two animatronics were gone, but Foxy was too. And it's 7 Plush Trap. I am a huge fan of the Five Nights at Freddy's series. The wonderful world building and rich lore. I love the game so much that I collect Five Nights memorabilia and collectibles. My favorite is an exclusive Plush Trap stuffy I got at Hot Topic. It's so creepy but I love it. I have it sitting on a stool in the corner of my room. First mistake. 4 is my favorite FNAF game, so getting it for Christmas was incredible. I asked my mom where she got it because they were so exclusive and were only out like 2 years ago. But she said that she got it from a man selling his late daughter's things because it was too painful to look at. I think I know why she died. A few nights ago I think Plush Trap started moving. He would be in different positions when I woke up, and not just because he fell over. At first I thought my dad was messing with me, but he swears he knows nothing about it. Last night I woke up and he was at the side of my bed, sitting on the ground. I don't think I can fall asleep tonight. It's like he's staring at me. It's 7am and I haven't fallen asleep. It's light out now. It should be okay, right? And it's 6 bells. I've been awake all night. I can't handle it anymore. The monsters are coming. They're terrifying. The teeth. The expressions, the stomachs, the monsters keep coming down the hall, the foxy keeps appearing in the closet, and the only time I know I'm safe is when those damn bells go off. The grandfather clock in my hallway. Once at 6am the monsters stop, they leave me alone, they go back to whatever corner of hell they came from. I think they're scared of it, and they know. Last night, I caught Fred trying to get into the clock. Luckily, as he left, the clock rang and it was 6 again. But tonight, I'm worried. The mania starts, I run to each door, listening for sounds and to the closet to make sure the toy stays a toy. And don't even get me started on the bed. No matter what I do, there's always something. I don't think I hear anything outside, but then crash. I look out and the grandfather clock is missing. No, it's not. It's on the ground in pieces. They smashed it, and now I have no bells to protect me. <sighs> They're coming. And at 5, night 8. I thought this was a 5 nights at Freddy's game. And then there was a bonus night 6 with a secret night 7. And then 
What's this then, a nightmarish night 8? Well, for those of you crazy enough to still like the series, I guess you'll be excited. I finished night 7 and there was an option to continue, and it brought me here. I don't know how difficult it will be, but I'll let you know after I try. Update, I just finished the night. It took me 3 hours and multiple attempts, but I did it. The night was crazy, all animatronics coming at all times, extremely fast. Even Foxy had to be checked on every 5 seconds to keep him contained. I figured out if you don't check the hallway though, they can't register Foxy in your office. So I pulled that trick and it seemed to work. Time to get some sleep. I didn't realize how dark it was outside. Next day. Night 9? What is this game? I don't even remember waking up, let alone there being any mention of any night past 5. Whatever, might as well play it. I need to get to the bottom of this anyway. Night 12? How many nights can there be? It's gotten so bad all I can remember is this game. Whenever I register what's going on, I'm at my computer playing in the middle of the night. Wait, now that I'm really focusing, I don't see my computer. It's just the office. Oh no. And at 4, poster. I'm an artist, and being a fan of Five Nights, I also made some FNAF fan art. One of these pieces is the crying child poster from the walls of the first game, and after hanging it on my wall, it also seems to be too accurate. After hanging it up, it started changing, like the ones in the first game. My parents just thought I was changing it weekly, and in all honesty, I wish I was, because it's terrifying. My parents moved it into my room since I was changing it so often, and now I have a haunted painting sitting next to me while I sleep. Undoubtedly our most vulnerable state. I don't know how to get rid of it. I keep trying to throw it out, but it just keeps showing back up. I guess I need to handle it, but I don't know if I'll be able to sleep. And at 3, I am Afton. My name is William Afton. I am doing my best to handle what's been happening to me, because I am stuck in hell. I've been cursed for my attempts to put my beautiful boy back together. Now the creatures I created in order to aid in that goal have been sent to torture me for no reason. Anyone would have tried to save their child, and if they had my technology, my mind, my brilliance, then they would have done the same as me. I keep getting told about the one I shouldn't have killed. I was the one who was killed. My boy was my life. His life was directly tied to mine, so of course I tried to get him back. How dare you try to punish me for that? Leave me to my demons. And at two, stuffed. Finally, my parents are bringing me to Freddy Fazbear's with David and Joey. When we got there, Golden Freddy was already out in the dance zone. David, Joey, and I ran over immediately because we love Golden Freddy. He was throwing tickets for the prize corner and said he had more in the back. He went to get them as we collected the remaining ones on the ground. When he took a while to come back, the other children went away. But we had just gotten there and he had left so soon, so Joey, David, and I went to go find him. We enter one of the rooms and the door closes. We turn around and see Golden Bonnie. Joey loves Golden Bonnie so he went for a hug, and got so excited that after he hugged him, he went into shock and fainted. He must have had ketchup with him because it started pulling around him. Yeah, definitely ketchup. Then everything went cold. My mom told me to keep my jacket with me, but then I see David fall over too, and then Bonnie picks him up. Then the lights go off, and I hear metal clanging together. Finally, in at number one, Golden Freddy. I got a Golden Freddy plush my last time at Freddy Fazbear's. My dad and I were working so hard to make enough tickets to do it, and we did. My plushie is my new best friend. I take him everywhere. I take him to bed, to school, daycare. It's been my one friend for the last few months. But recently, things have been getting scary. It started glowing. His eyes have little red lights going on, but I can't be sure why. There's also been a man that I keep seeing. I see him at school, I see him outside daycare, and I see him outside my bedroom window. But my dad never believes me. He thinks the big kids are trying to scare me, but I don't know anymore. Wait, Freddy's talking to me. He says battery low, and his eyes went out. What? I showed my dad and he ripped it open. He found something inside and he smashed it, but I know what it was. It was a camera. I just wonder what it was doing there. And at 10, Chuck E. Cheese. When I was in college, I was a night guard at Chuck E. Cheese. Well, night guard is a sort of loose term here. After they closed, I would have to stick around for a couple of hours, and make sure that no kid was hiding in the store, and make sure that the animatronics were turned off. Well, one night, I swear to god, it was almost exactly like these damn games everyone's been freaking out about. One summer night, it was close to the end of my shift, which at that point was 3am. I was waiting in the security room with the cameras on, with YouTube on my phone, watching the latest videos from my favorite creators. When all of a sudden I see movement on the cameras. I look up and see one of the animatronics dancing. I don't know how it got turned back on, but when I went to go turn it off, it was gone. While I was out there another one started dancing, but then it put its hands on the banister that the robots are behind. Then the curtains closed and I heard nothing. I went to report it to my manager, but my watch went off as the time hit 3am and I just left it alone. When I got back the next day, the robot was back. I still don't know what I saw that night, but I've never worked another security 
security job again. In a nine Henry. My name is Henry, and recently I went into business with a longtime friend named William. We bought the rights to this character named Fred Bear and rebranded it into a pizzeria with arcade games and singing animatronics. He is the business end, and I am the creative end. My creations were supposed to help kids, but now they've been warped, molded into something else entirely. The police said that they can't help me, but I know what Afton has been doing. He's trying to take children away from their families, but not before doing unspeakable things. I tried to buy him out yesterday. I used the shotgun clause in our contract. But he was able to outbid me. Now he owns the company and I'm stuck here with nothing. My daughter keeps trying to go, saying even if I don't own the company, she still likes what I made. But I know what he will do if he finds her. I've banned her from going, but I've still added a secret part of her favorite bracelet that makes sure our security protocols focus on her. It sounds selfish, I know, but wouldn't you do anything to save your child? Why is there someone knocking? This isn't good. We need to leave. Where is my daughter? What the hell is at my door? And it ain't Chica's Party World. After the fall of Freddy Fazbear, the IPs to the characters were still intact. So an individual named Riley bought the rights to Chica, the yellow bird, and her signature cupcake. They opened a new pizzeria with new branding, but still in the same building. It had all the amenities that one needs after all. We would regularly have officers at the location, constantly checking to make sure that Afton never showed his face. He never did. But then we noticed, neither did the owner. After talking to some employees while off duty, they had never met the owner either. The man was said to only arrive after the place had closed and everyone had left to take earnings from the register. We ran the owner's name against our database and there was nobody in the city with the name Riley Dramakovich. So after attaining a warrant, we discovered what we had feared the most. Riley was an alias for one William Joel Afton, who, after running this business under the alias, used it to kill 15 more children in the span of one week. All after hours, and all after following a pink chica out back after they had all gotten home. Suspect was arrested at 11.38 p.m. on Tuesday, June 18th, 1996 by arresting officer William Shaston. And at 7 Crying Child. I loved Freddy Fazbear's as a kid. I would go there every weekend with my parents. Our parents would talk over a few beers and everyone was happy. We would play games, say hi to Freddy and the gang, and we would have the time of our lives dancing with everyone. Until November 1996, where our lives got changed forever. We were playing ski ball until I had to go to the bathroom, but when I got back, my friends weren't there, and their tickets were hanging out of the machine. I grabbed them and went back to our parents, who said they had gone to the bathroom, but that wasn't true, because I was just in there. I started heading over to see if they were in there, but as I walked past a dark room, I see someone with them. He was tall, looked old, and had a purple shirt on. He put the head on one of them and then turned around and saw me. He started towards the door, but I ran back to my parents. He came out and I pointed at him, saying that he had my friends. My parents just said it was time to go and took me home. My friends were never found, and nobody believes me, said that I was only a kid then. But it's been over 20 years, and they never looked where I told them. Idiots. All of them. And at 6, it's me. I am not Chica. I am not Freddy. I am your worst nightmare. Hello, it's me. I am not Foxy. I am not Bonnie. I am coming for you. Hello, it's me. The faster you go, the louder I shriek. That's how you know that it's me. And when you feel cold and only see gold, then you will know that I have your soul. And at 5, Springtrap.exe. Five Nights at Freddy's 3 has just come out. I've been a fan of the series since the beginning, especially after everyone was making theories about the story. I wanted to play 3 when it came out, but I never really had money. I was looking for the games online, but all I could get was links to buy it. The only other links I was finding were to a website called Pirate Bay that was using a program called uTorrent. I tried installing the program and getting the game, and it worked for a while. But instead of the game being called Five Nights at Freddy's 3, it was called Springtrap. I guess it was to make things sneakier. I loaded the game when it installed, but this wasn't a Five Nights game. The game only had Springtrap on the menu. I knew who he was because of all the online theories. He was staring at me, but his eyes were following me. And not my cursor, but me. I loaded the game and I was a security guard, but instead of being in the security room, I was at the main door to the building. Text faded onto screen saying escape, and I heard things fall behind me. I turned around and there was nothing there. I tried opening the door, but it was locked, and I needed to find a key. I went into the first room, and I saw that it was the closet. There was nothing in there, but as I turned to leave, Springtrap was standing at the exit. He stared at me for what felt like forever, before walking out of sight. I exited the room and checked the others, and there was no key at all. As I head back to the main room, Springtrap was at the door, standing in front of it with a key around his neck. He takes it off and gives it to me, and I open the door, but as I walk out, he says I always come back, then pulls me back inside. The door slams and Springtrap starts tearing me to shreds. The game deleted itself off my computer and I have never looked for it since. And at 4 Help Wanted. 
My local Chuck E. Cheese had a help wanted sign in the window, so I figured I would try applying since I've played all the Five Nights games. When I brought it up at the interview, the manager hired me on the spot. I thought it was a joke, but later on I figured out why. The first night was exactly like the Five Nights games. Some recorded messages teaching me about the job since the managing guard was on paternity leave, and a similar setup to the games. Nothing happened until the next night, where the animatronics started playing songs and dancing. The next night, one of them went missing, even though it was there earlier that day, and I thought it was just my mind, but I found it in the kitchen. My final night was where it got bad. All of the animatronics were gone, and I saw them walking on the security camera. They were all walking towards me, and knowing the Five Nights games, I knew there was nothing I could do. So the only thing I thought to do was jump out the window and never go back. The place was shut down a week later for foul odors and ooze coming out of the robots. And at 3 Sound Disc. I just finished watching all the theories on FNAF. They were so interesting, and I love the thought behind the sound discs. I think he was a little too right though. See, for the past few nights I've been seeing things. Seeing things like my Golden Freddy plush walking, and my stuffed Bonnie jumping on my bed. But ever since seeing the video, I'm worried it will get worse. Update, I was right. Last night I had some of the worst dreams imaginable. The monsters were coming after me. It was almost exactly like the FNAF 4 gameplay, but only in my house. I don't know what to do. I don't think I can handle it anymore. I just give up. And it's you, Michael. I know my father's secret. My name is Michael. You may know my father, William. I saw him carrying bags home after work, but when I looked inside, I saw children. People who I once called my friends were cold, pale, and lifeless in a bag being carried by my father. When I confronted him, he told me to stay out of it, but I'm not letting this happen. I know that my sister died, but she wouldn't want this. He asked me why I couldn't get over it, because I can't get the image of you out of my head. Carrying in bodies of dead children? I don't even know how long you've been doing this. He didn't like it when I said that though. He took one of the arms of his robots and hit me, and everything went dark. But I could still hear him. He said he would put me back together. Whatever that means. Finally, in at number one, Juniors. I was with a few of my buddies grabbing some drinks at Juniors, a bar down the block from me. When all of a sudden some dude comes to the door trying to get in. The bouncer called him William and tells him that he knows he's not allowed in. We have no idea why. We've been coming here for the past year and have heard no mention of anyone named William. Then the crazy guy starts getting aggressive, yelling and even shoving the bouncer. It at least explains why they have a bouncer. It's for this guy. All of a sudden he falls to the floor, and this William guy comes strolling in, with his shirt now tinted red. I start freaking out, but my friends are telling me to stay calm. William then yells for someone named Henry, to which the guy behind me stands up. What do you want, William? William yelled that he snitched and started walking towards us. My friends and I got ready to stand up, but Henry pushed my shoulder back down, telling us to stay seated. You were killing kids, William. Henry said quietly, but my friends and I heard him. William smiled and said if that's how you see it before walking away. But before closing the door, he leaned back in and shouted, call your daughter, tell her I say hi, before walking outside and waiting in his car. Henry does and doesn't get an answer, and that's when my friends and I spring into action. We run outside and see a clown standing in front of us. She looked shiny, had orange pigtails, and was taller than any of us. I heard the sound of metal on metal, but then everything went black. In the tent, I am Afton. My name is William Afton. I am doing my best to handle what's been happening to me because I am stuck in hell. I have been cursed for my attempts to put my beautiful boy back together. Now the creatures I created in order to aid in that goal have been sent to torture me for no reason. Anyone would have tried to save their child, and if they had my technology, my mind, my brilliance, they would have done the same as me. I keep getting told about the one I shouldn't have killed. I was the one who was killed. My boy was my life. His life was directly tied to mine, so of course I tried to get him back. How dare you try to punish me for that? You cursed me for doing something any parent would. Leave me to my demons. And your nine cheek is party world. After the fall of Freddy Fazbear, it was clear the stage was set, no pun intended, for another contender in children's entertainment. I'm going to keep using that line whenever it fits. And after the unfortunate closing of Circus Baby's Pizza World, someone saw an opportunity. So an individual named Riley bought the rights to Chica, the yellow bird with her signature cupcake, and they opened a new pizzeria with new branding, but still the same building. It had all the amenities one needed after all. We would regularly have officers at the location, constantly checking to make sure that Afton never showed his face. He never did, but then we noticed, neither did the owner. 
After talking to some employees while off duty, they had never actually met the owner. The men was said to only arrive after the place had closed down and everyone had left to take the earnings from the register. We ran the owner's name against our database and discovered that there was nobody in this city with the name Riley Dramakovich. So after attaining a warrant, we discovered what we had feared the most. Riley was an alias for one William Joel Afton, who, after running this business under the alias, he had used it to kill 15 more children in the span of one week, all after hours and all after following a pink chica around the back after they had gotten home. Suspect was arrested at 11.36 p.m. on Tuesday on June 18, 1996 by arresting officer William Chaston. In a date melding. Hello, I was a beta tester for the new Freddy Fazbear Entertainment Experience, where they were claiming they were trying to repay their reputation. However, they aren't. The game is an elaborate cover-up to try and hide and seal the man who is behind the missing children's incident into their game. However, I've made a terrible mistake. The entity they sealed in the game had tied itself to the previous tapes of the beta tester. She broke them apart, but I only found this out at the end. Smart move. Why would you put that most crucial point at the end? This entity has tried to merge with me before, but all that happened is I went up on stage. Ever since then, I've been trying to find him, but I can't. The corridor he came from has been blocked off by a metal wall, so I think that maybe he's gone for good. I'm dictating this while I continue my search, but I... Wait. What was that? I hear the sound of metal grinding on metal? It's the wall. I had a little hatch, and it's opening. Who's opening it? My god, it's him. Telling me to be quiet, because he can still hear me. And at seven, it's me. I got to have my birthday at one of the most fun places on earth. My parents were letting me have my sixth birthday at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. When we got there, when we got there, my friend Brian was already there. After a few minutes, my other friends Jenny, Grayson, and Daniel showed up. Since it was their first time here, they decided to sneak backstage with my other friends to try and see Freddy himself. When we did, I ran over and hugged him. He hugged me back. I asked when Golden Freddy would be out and he said a few minutes, but to follow him where we can go get some pizza. He asked what my name was and I told him, Noah Blackley. We followed him to the back room, but he was gone, and a man in a purple sweater had arrived instead. The last thing I remember is screaming and someone banging on a locked door, and seeing my friends being put into some spare suits. I got Golden Freddy. A few years later, someone walked in looking for a job as a night guard. Someone on the phone greeted him and asked him his name. He said his name was Frank Blackley. Oh my god. It's him! Dad! Dad, it's me! Noah! It's me! And it's six juniors. I was with a group of buddies grabbing a few bevies at a bar down the block from me called Juniors. We were having a good time until one jerk showed up trying to get in. The bouncer stopped him and said he knew he wasn't allowed in. We don't know who this guy is. We've been coming here over a year and we haven't even heard of this guy. Then the jerk starts getting aggressive. The bouncer calls him William and asks him to stop. William shoves the guard a little until eventually the bouncer collapses. This William guy comes walking in and shouts for someone named Henry. The guy behind me stands up in response and asks William what he wants. William steps closer, to which I get ready to stand up, but Henry puts his hand on my shoulder to tell me to stay seated. Henry quietly said, You were killing kids, William. Making sure that we knew. William said, That's the way you see it, and walked away. But before leaving entirely, he looked back at Henry, who was still standing, and said, Call your daughter. Tell her I say hi. Before leaving for his car, Henry called his daughter and got no response, so my friends and I ran out to confront William. When we got outside, we stood face to face with a clown. She was really tall, pale, and had orange pigtails. I looked at my friends, heard the sound of metal on metal, then everything went black. Halfway through at number 5, Spring Trap. This one is written like a journal, but I'm going to be skipping to the most important day of the bunch. Day 57. This suit has pierced every bit of exposed flesh. However, the mechanical nature of this suit have been able to help me move when the pain is too much. It is still me in the suit, and I must still continue my mission of putting my boy back together. I must escape from this cell that they have sealed around me. How am I supposed to break through? The vents. They couldn't have blocked off the vents. It's such an integral part of the building. I got inside and have been crawling for an hour, unaware of where I am or where I'm going. I finally see a light. I head towards it, however, when I get there I see someone sitting in an office chair. He flashes a light so I back away. How does he know that I'm here? Where do I go now? Maybe out front to try to find him. And at four, back together. 
I know you miss me. I know you feel responsible, but is this really the right way to go? I'm here for a reason, aren't I? Sure, I was the one who died, but maybe this is a form of punishment for you, but salvation for me. I won't need to go my life knowing about what you've done. I won't need to deal with the repercussions of having your name. So leave me be, father. Let me rest. Don't put me back together. I am at peace, as are most of the children you've taken. There is one that isn't, but you'll meet them soon. If you put me back together, I will have no other choice than to ensure your empire is destroyed, along with every trace of your despicable deeds. This is how things are meant to be, so unless you want to ensure your own destruction, please, don't put me back together. In a three, Midnight Motorist. It's done. The first one. My quest to find the answers of life and those who have just started it has begun. This being... This being was standing outside the diner, green wristband, black hair. I know who it belonged to. Henry, the partner. The man responsible for the way I am. The man who made me imagine what if these creatures were alive. I'm driving home, covered in the blood of number one. It's on my face, my suit, my hands. But it's around Halloween, so hopefully people think it's a stunt. The cops are coming. I change lanes and let them pass. They must be after me. But they won't find me, especially if they can drive past me while I look like this. I need to get home. I need to make sure that they won't find me. I need a machine to help me. I'm sure I can find one. Or perhaps, I can make one. In it too, Chuck. Recently I've been playing a lot of the Five Nights at Freddy's, all of the different games. One, two, three, four, and Sister Location are all amazing. But a side effect from all those games is very worrisome, and now I believe it to be real. Not in a I believe these places really exist, but when I go to Chuck E. Cheese I feel as if I am at Freddy Fazbear's. I see Freddy and the gang rather than Chuck E and his gang. I see men in purple rather than workers. I don't know what to do. I've even seen kids be lured into the back. I told a worker and he says that that's ridiculous, so I decided to check it out. I went into the back rooms and looked for myself. When I checked though, I saw a man dressed in a chuggy suit in that same room. He saw me and asked what I was doing. I stood there silent because I know what's about to happen if I told him my true intentions. He ushered me out of the room and back to my parents, but then another chuggy came by to bring me back. I was very confused, but my parents let me. When I got out of sight, everything went black. Finally, in a number one, break the cycle. He's still alive. Are you kidding me? He wasn't destroyed when I burned that terrible joke of a haunted house down? Fine, I have a plan to get all the remaining souls to their final rest. I need your help, Michael. I know that he's your father, but he's done unspeakable things. He's not really your father anymore. There's only one option. For the week, we will simulate a pizzeria and bring everyone back. The music will lure the others, and I will bring back my daughter with another bear. And your father will be back to continue his mission. Does he know about you? Do you know about you? Well then, I'm sorry my boy, but I have some disturbing news for you. It may explain quite a lot, but you need to follow paragraph 4. It's the only way to break this cycle. But don't worry, I'll make sure you're at rest with your father's deeds. Number 10, one of a kind. This story happened to a friend of a friend of mine. Todd had always been a big FNAF fan, so when I was invited to his birthday, I found a Foxy plushie online and asked my dad if he would buy it for him. He agreed and I gave it to him as a present. The odd thing was, when I was looking online, the only quantity for the plushie was one, and the description read, one of a kind. The next day after Todd's birthday, I sent him a text seeing if he wanted to come over and play video games with me on my Xbox, but he didn't answer. I went to his house just down the street after dinner to invite him, but his house was gone. In its place was a restaurant that appeared to be under construction. Number 9, Freddy Plushie. My teenage son is a huge fan of FNAF, so I bought him a Freddy plushie. He fell in love with it, proving that if the theme is right, I guess you're never too old for a plushie. However, at night, I noticed that the plushie was moving through the house. I often wake up in the middle of the night with it on my bed. Sometimes I wake up and it seems like my room isn't even my room, but it's actually Freddy Fazbear's pizza. One night, I woke up from what I thought was a nightmare, where I was being stuffed into a giant life-sized Freddy plushie, except that there was fluff stuffing in my mouth when I woke up. I made my son burn the plushie after that. 
Number eight, hide and seek. Sarah and Lisa loved playing hide and seek, despite the fact that they both knew it was pretty childish. They were also both big fans of the FNAF series. They both took turns when playing together as to who was it, and they even played a themed game of hide and seek at recess sometimes where one of them would be the animatronics and one would be the night security guard playing like a FNAF themed hide and seek. One time when they were playing at recess, Sarah hid inside a hollow bush from Lisa, who was playing as the animatronic this time around. Sarah closed her eyes while she was hiding, but when she did, she found herself transported into Freddy's security room. She felt a hand on one shoulder. She turned around and opened her eyes, but instead of Lisa, it was Nightmare Freddy jump scaring her. Number seven, night eight. My friend Eric told me this story, but I'm not sure if it's true. Apparently there's a glitch in his original FNAF game where you can access a bonus night, which he calls night eight. Rather than being custom, it's a night where you're actually monitoring outside the restaurant by walking around and basically guarding the perimeter while leaving the animatronics locked inside so they can't escape. The weird thing is he said when he checked out his mobile tablet his character carried around outside, he noticed them calling his own name on the security feed. Eric, why did you leave us, they asked. Eric, why don't you come back inside and play? Eric is really good at FNAF, but this new level threw him for a loop, and one animatronic, Bonnie, somehow escaped the building. Just then the game froze, and his computer started to power down. He heard his doorbell ring, and a ghostly voice emanated from his computer speaker, telling him to answer the door and to come and play. Number six, the mysterious restaurant. This is a true story. Chuck E. Cheese's has always been one of my favorite places to go. So when I got to pick where the family went this weekend for our family outing, you can bet that I picked Chuck E. Cheese. But when we got there, the restaurant looked different. It had been rebranded as Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. The animatronics inside were all different as well. My sister seemed to really like one named Chica, a chicken with a bib on her and a cupcake in her hand. The last time I saw my sister, she was holding Chica's hand and walking away. She went missing while we were there, and I never saw her again. Number five, Golden Bonnie. I loved Fred Bear's Family Diner. It used to be my favorite place to eat until it closed. I missed it terribly and hoped it would reopen. While I was out for a walk one day, it appeared my wishes had finally come true. I stumbled upon a poster in the mall advertising the reopening of my favorite restaurant on November 8th, right on the day of my birthday. I was excited and I begged my mom to let me have my birthday party there. She agreed. When the grand opening day came, my friends and I piled into my mom's van and we drove out to Fred Bear's Family Diner. Except when we got there, I noticed it was different. It wasn't called Fred Bear's Family Diner anymore. Instead, it was renamed Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. After some time at my party, Bonnie finally came out, but he seemed different. He was golden, like at the diner, but he talked to us directly, inviting us children to come along with him. Do you want to have some more pizza and tickets, kids? He asked. We answered with an excited cheer. Okay, but then you have to come along with me. I followed him and he asked all of us what our favorite animatronic was. I answered Bonnie before he pulled me into the back room. I found myself placed carefully in a Bonnie suit and then my eyes closed. When I awoke, I found years had passed and I found myself unable to talk. Anytime I tried, all I could hear was the voice of Bonnie through the suit's voice box. Outside the back room, I heard someone asking to work the night shift. The person revealed that their name was Michael Afton. My brother. Michael, it's me, I shouted. Brother, brother, it's me. He didn't respond to my voice, and so I remained trapped at Freddy Fazbear's forever, determined to one day escape and get revenge. Number four, save me. A girl named Vanessa was always known as a loner who kept to herself. Looking for a place to live and not having much funds, she was forced to move into a downtrodden apartment with the limited amount that she had for rent. As a bulk of gift, her landlord left her a note with a game. The note apologized for any rumors that she might hear regarding him. Thinking this was odd, but nice, Vanessa chose to accept the gift. Later, while out in town, she heard a rumor that her landlord was the son of a serial killer, which was why the rent in her building was so affordable, and why almost no one in town chose to live there. Shrugging it off as the rumors that her landlord had warned her about, Vanessa returned home. However, she noticed on her way home that a golden bunny animatronic seemed to be following her everywhere she went. She confronted the bunny, trying to lash out at it, but her hand went right through. 
too. The bunny apparently was in her mind. It began whispering to her, possessing her, and eventually she found her actions were no longer her own. She started a cult against her own wishes, her body and mind now fully possessed by the golden bunny. The bunny had programmed her to do its bidding, and her landlord, she would soon find out, was a man obsessed with demonic possession who went by the name of Michael Afton. Number three, the tapes. I found these tapes at a garage sale that were titled Pizzeria Biz. As I listened to them, I realized there were some sort of creepy confessions from a man who had seen something dastardly happen at a kid's pizza place. The more I listened, the more I found myself haunted by the ghost of an animatronic that was mentioned in the tape, a jolly but deadly character named Balloon Boy. The animatronic would haunt my nightmares, and I found myself in my dreams returning to a room that Balloon Boy had taken a young girl named Sally, mentioned in the tapes. I was tortured for what felt like eternity, and when I awoke, I found myself covered in bruises and cuts. I threw the tapes away the next day. Number two, the serial song. I have been the biggest FNAF fan since day one. I have played through every game multiple times and have all the collectible merch. My parents think it's just a phase and so aren't too concerned with getting me everything Five Nights themed that I asked for. I heard a rumor that they were actually making a cereal, so I asked for that cereal the next time that we were out, instead of my regular Reese Puffs. My parents agreed and the next day I went downstairs for breakfast, there it was, Freddy Fazbear cereal. I hurriedly and excitedly poured myself a bowl. My parents were still asleep. I was so excited I got up early just to eat it. It was even still dark outside. As I poured the bowl though, I heard music began to play. It sounded like Freddy's music from the game. I looked in the box thinking it must be some kind of hidden sound recording like in a birthday card. I didn't see anything. So as I poured the milk with one hand, I reached with my other hand into the box, feeling around for what was making the sound. Then I felt something latch onto my hand. It was tearing my hand apart, shredding it. I screamed out in pain and noticed that the cereal bowl was filled with little nightmare freddles, which pounced on me and began to bite at my face. The milk I was pouring also appeared to be red and thick, like blood. I got rid of all my FNAF stuff after that, and my parents are trying to sue the makers of the cereal, although we still haven't been able to track them down. Apparently the cereal was never for sale, it was never even created, but my missing hand and my scarred face remain as proof that someone must have been behind it. Number one, time to play. I always loved playing FNAF, but my mom was consistently worried that the game was too scary and told me to stop playing. She kept nagging me. So to prove her wrong that the games were not too scary for me, I offered to let her play. Something you should know about my mom is that she's a scientist who works in robotics and AI. She actually works for a big company that everyone knows and is a big position there. Anyways, my mom accepted my offer, set on proving that the game was too scary, but she herself actually enjoyed the game, becoming obsessed like me. To the point that we actually bought a second gaming PC for my mom, which we kept down in the basement. My mom became so obsessed that I rarely saw her anymore except for dinner. But when I did see her, she looked really tired and run down like she'd been staying up all night. One night, I awoke to the sound of what seemed like a church bell ringing. My room was pitch black, so I reached over for my night lamp. Clicking it on, I saw at the foot of my bed a life-size Freddy Fazbear animatronic replica. The bear tilted its head and said in the most blood-curdling, crackly voice, time to play.